Azure is Microsoft's application platform for the public cloud and it follows all the tenets of cloud computing. It's a subscription model publicly available to anybody who wants to use it and it supports both infrastructure services such as computing resources, storage and networking, and higher level API services where we could, for example, take a picture of something and have Azure tell us details about that picture. Azure was announced in 2008 and was finally released for production services in 2010. And since then, it's grown dramatically and provided all kinds of APIs. In fact, there are more APIs and services available in Azure than any of the other cloud providers out there. If you look at the stats behind Azure, you'll find some pretty incredible numbers. For example, Microsoft is reporting in 2016 for the first quarter that they've had over 120,000 new customers sign up per month. 1.4 million SQL databases are stored in Azure, and 2 trillion messages per week are processed by Azure. 90% of businesses surveyed plan to increase their cloud spending in 2016, and of those, 42% expect to increase annual spending by as much as 30%. So cloud computing is definitely a thing, and developers need to be aware of exactly what's happening in this space so that they can make sure that their apps take advantage of it. From an Azure perspective, the services that are offered are provided in a set of pillars. And at the very bottom, we have a set of cloud infrastructure services. These are low-level CPU, storage, and networking services that you can use within your app. And typically, these are things where Azure provides some really baseline hardware, and then you layer on top of that the things that you'd actually like to run on that hardware. However, Azure actually has a bunch of things that layer on top of that themselves. For example, you can get a set of analytics. You can also use IoT services. We can get some developer services and platform services that we'll talk about as we go through mobile content. In fact, when we look at the services that are offered, you'll see a massive amount of APIs and specific services that Azure has available. So for example, you can see here that we have compute services where we can actually get raw CPU resources that we might be able to take advantage of. We have app platform services, which are things like web applications and mobile apps that might take advantage of database storage. We have developer services such as Visual Studio in the cloud and a version control system that we can take advantage of. We have media services where we can stream our videos and get a content delivery network that makes sure that our videos are hosted as close as possible to where they're being consumed. We have analytics that are available to us such as event hubs where we can pass messages and data back and forth. We can watch and monitor our services and see how they're running in real time. We have data services available where we can actually host data in a variety of forms up in the cloud, including a full set of SQL databases. And all of this is offered in a pay-as-you-go model, so you only pay for the things that you actually use and only for the time that you use them. All in all, there are 59 different products available in the Azure Cloud as of mid-2016.